knows that there are certain things students do that drive us up the wall. A little while ago, I gave you some pet hates and peas that I had, and it was one of my most popular episodes ever. So guess what? Here we go again. My pet hates 2024 edition. That's coming right up. So strap in and let's get into it. Good everyone and welcome to episode 120 of Flight Training Australia. No matter wherever you are, whatever license you've got, how many hours you have, this is the podcast all about flight training and flying in Australia and beyond. I'm your host, Trent Robinson. How are you going? G'day. Hope you had a fantastic week and going into a fantastic Easter long weekend. Please be safe. A little bit late this week, as I said, but uh, I am here. I've made it. And uh, I, this week has been uh, very interesting, certainly with the weather. It can uh, Today was uh, being a Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday when you're listening. But uh, yeah, Thursday was very much almost like a taste of the dry season. But we've still got a bit to go yet. There's a tropical low potentially uh, off the the northwest coast of Gove there that uh, could be forming. April can be a uh, common cyclonic period. So we're not out of the woods yet. The wet season's far from over. Uh, The day before that, I was uh, storms left and right day before that we had uh, holding and weather everywhere aircraft holding uh, for airliners to light aircraft so plenty going on uh, lots to talk about with that there uh, took a bunch of footage and things there I'm going to try and uh, put a bit of an explainer video again just to give you guys more uh, visuals of what it's like flying in the wet season the decision making processes that needed to be made and uh, just to give you more insight as to what goes on and and, uh, and how it all works. CASA uh, consultation period is now open for the, the draft policy for the colour vision testing. So a little bit of history on this. Uh, a few years ago, uh, colour blindness, is, well, before that, colour blindness was pretty much a, a no-go item for most pilots, uh, certainly from an instrument professional night flying kind of level. It then came to the point where colour blindness was allowed, but then CASA reneged on the whole process. You had to do an assessment and flight flight test with a examiner, approved examiner, and then uh, they decided, yeah, no, we're not doing that anymore. A few years later, we've uh, come back to the table, or CASA's come back to the table, and there is a proposal out now. So if you are colour blind, have colour blindness, or uh, are just interested in what's going on and want to have your say, go uh, check your email. Pretty much everyone should have received, with an ARN, should have received an email uh, about the notification of uh, the proposal. You can have a bit of a look at what's involved in the testing, the assessment, the ground uh, component, the flight component. And if you are successful in this proposed testing, if it comes out and subject to everyone's opinions and whatever changes happen, then you can get a unrestricted class one or two medical, which is fantastic news. So definitely get in and have your say. I'll put mine in today and uh, we'll just have to wait and see what happens with that one. All right. Enough of that. Let's get into it, eh? Pet Hates for 2024 edition. There's some new ones here. Uh, There's some old ones. Common. They're going to happen all the time. But there's a couple of new ones as well. But if you haven't listened to episode 73, well, you know where to find it. You can go and compare to what I said last time. And the first one to kick off is one I did cover off in the uh, the, the first episode there. It's annoying, it's totally avoidable, and it's unnecessary. And personally, I think it, it, it leads to, well, I don't think, it leads to further issues uh, causing dramas in the cockpit. But I think it's one that comes from nerves. And it is pilots turning up the volume so damn high that it becomes distorted and unintelligible. And I ask them, why are you doing that? It's like your headset no good. And it's not that. It's just, I don't want to miss a radio call. Yet the irony is it's so loud they miss the radio call because it's just distorted. It's not clear and you can't understand it. 
All right, that was long. Uh, that goes along with holding your microphone so close to your lips that it also becomes distorted. It's just it's not sufficient for voice transmission anymore. We've been sitting in the cockpit talking to each other through the intercom all this time. No worries, don't touch the mic. As soon as you want to go press that press to talk, stick the volume right up in your mouth and it gets all distorted. <laughs> now, I'm not going to do it to you. That's terrible, isn't it? But that's what it sounds like. And again, sometimes the uh, controllers can't understand what you're saying as well. So, guys, please stop doing that. It drives me nuts. It drives a lot of people nuts. I know a lot of people commented on that one last time. They go, oh, my God, yes, I know. <laughs> All right, anyway, I'm not trying to have a total win here. It's a bit of fun as well. But if you do do that, just stop. There's absolutely no need. Yes, sometimes you've got to reposition your mic. I'm not talking about that. You know what I'm talking about because you do it, don't you? Yeah, you do it. Come on, be honest. Yeah. That's what I thought. All right, knock it off. All right, speaking of comms, headsets. <laughs> Firstly, let's preamble this one. I get it. Headsets cost money. They are a tool of the trade, however. Um, I, I know it's, you know, got a hundred grand to spend on flight training. What's another, you know, two thousand dollars on a on a decent headset, but it is another two thousand dollars, and usually you're borrowing the other hundred, so you still don't have the two anyway. I get that, but it is a piece of protective equipment for your hearing. It is a piece of equipment that uh, will be with you for quite some time if you look after it. But bringing headsets with you that have deteriorated ear seals, all right. So if they're the foam style ones that have the, the cover over it and wraps it around. That is actually a fundamental design piece of that ear seal. All right, as soon as that breaks open, the black bit comes off and you can see the yellow foam underneath. It's it's next to useless. You'd be surprised if you've got that headset, stop using it. Go and order some bloody replacement ear seals. Okay. They're not that expensive. You will be surprised when you swap those ear seals. Oh, see, try and say that ear seals over, and then put the new ones on, and you'll be blown away by the difference and how much easier it is to hear. So don't tell me they're fine, because everyone who does that, the radio goes up to full volume. They nearly miss every radio call, and if they do manage to catch some of them, they usually always have to say "say again." And that means increased workload, increased stress, and, uh, yeah, it's not cool. All right, so I'm not going to get into a, a brand debate, but it really, I think in this day and age as well, the technology is there, but a noise attenuated, a noise-canceling headset really is a must. The really low-level cheap ones, look, let's just face it, they're crap. All right, there might be some better crap ones than the other crap ones, but they're all crap. They just don't work well. They are not cutting the sound down very well. It is not clear. And I know some of the ones that use at the flight schools because they're used for students. The I walk into the airplane, well, I climb into the airplane, and the volume is up full bore and I nearly blow my eardrums out because they're trying to overcompensate for the poor quality of the headset. Invest in a good quality headset, people, please. It will save you so much frustration and heartache. All right. Speaking of investments, old iPads. Whilst we're talking about how cheap aviation is, <laughs> old iPad, um, they just don't cut it, all right? If you're trying to use it with your EFB, it's going to load the VNC one block at a time. They don't have the functionality of our current iPads because the uh, software just doesn't support that old one anymore. They hinder your ability to function. They become a distraction, and it is just really not worth it. Again, I get it. It's another expense, but look, this is just aviation. Find a way. Get your family and friends to chip in and help you buy one for Christmas, your birthday, whatever it is. But upgrade it and get the best, latest version or model you can if you get a really cheap one it's just going to be superseded again in six months time it's just going to become useless and it's not going to be worth it 
I recommend getting one with data card, if at all humanly possible. Uh, just having that to be able to submit your flight plans, get your weather, access the weather radar and flight, all that sort of stuff, but be portable and mobile. Um, one thing I come across very often is people are used to having a flight school set up with Wi-Fi and uh, champagne or flight planner or napes and everything all readily available. And when you come up here, you're kind of a bit more independent or you need to be independent. So iPads, get the best one you can, get a data iPad. iPad mini or iPad Air is totally up to you. I get the bigger one just because I use it like a laptop as well. And just with my vision, I like the bigger one better. It's easier for me to see. All right, but uh, yeah, get the best one you can. All right, so this is getting expensive, this episode, isn't it? Let's, let's move on to something that's a bit more free. Radio calls. Yeah, we, we love radio calls, don't we? Put up your hand if you can make radio calls. Yeah, no? Anyone? No, no one out there. All right, guys, what is going on? Why can't we make radio calls? It's a really interesting thing that we've been doing all this time, but I don't know, people just can't make radio calls. It plagues us forever. Sometimes I can't make them either. It's just you push that button and it's just a complete brain dump button, isn't it? But that's not pro quite what I'm talking about. It's more about correct phraseology. Now, there's a few I could include here, you know, starting with when you get into a new, uh, switch over to a new frequency and you go, and uh, Brisbane Centre, this is uh, whoever you are. Like, you know, what's the big intro? We don't need that. But the one I want to talk about today is your time, your estimations. So it might say, uh, Darwin traffic, distant, you know, arrival ETA time 57. So you basically just said your arrival time four different ways. Now, if you have a look at the AOP, it's got ETA in brackets. Okay. So what the idea is, is you substitute what's in brackets with the intention. So sometimes it's like destination is in brackets. So you don't say destination Moorabbin, you just say Moorabbin. And the same with ETA. You don't go ETA 57, you don't go ETA time 57 or any of that. It's just Moorabbin 57, okay? Drop the ETA, drop the time, drop the estimate, drop anything mentioning time. We know it's time because that's the format of the radio call. That's why we follow standard procedures, standard phraseologies. We know what bit of information comes in what order, and that's the, the way we're expecting to receive it from air traffic control. That's what they're expecting for us to read back. And uh, for when we're making calls initially, that's what they're expecting us to say in that order. And it just minimizes excess time on the radio. And I know it might not seem like much. It's just another word. It's just, But you'd be surprised how, how much longer sometimes radio calls can take. And when it gets busy, it gets frustrating. All right. So have a look at the AOP. It's all in there. Um, and if you're not sure, ask your instructor. All right. Next one, GPSs. Ooh. If you're going to get into an aeroplane that has a GPS, read the damn manual. There's this quick reference guide. It's really simple. It's really easy. There's simulators. There's online uh, simulators you can download on your computer. There's YouTube videos. There's heaps of ways to learn and get familiar with your GPS. Now, a lot of people convince themselves that they know how to use the GPS, but they're turning the knobs and then they keep pushing the cursor button, which, of course, deletes everything you just did. And then you've got – it's just basic phraseology, basic terminology, same user interface pretty much across all the, the GPS units. They're the same but different. All right, so enter is always there to confirm information. It's like when you're on your keyboard at home. Enter puts things in the cursor button. That's like your escape key. That's like, no, get me out of here. I don't want to do this anymore. So there's all these basic things that you can learn. And remember, 61305, general competency. You, you need to be familiar with the equipment on board the aircraft and how to use it within the limits of your licenses and ratings. And why does this really matter though, Trent? What's the issue? Well, I'm trying to save you guys stress and heartache. It just adds to the stress of flying sometimes. When when you're in unfamiliar airspace and everything else, you know, it's just one other thing that you've got to deal with that makes your life difficult. So go and spend some time, learn the equipment, understand how it works, how to change things. Sometimes uh, things reset, how do you fix it? And uh, 
just play around with it a bit. You can't really do too much damage with it, but preferably on the ground, not while you're flying. All right, next one. Pilots are uh, just putting so much energy and time into trying to do a greaser landing that they usually always end up stuffing it up, especially on check rides and that sort of thing. You know, we're looking for consistency. So you keep trying to get the greasiest landing. Remember, we're holding you or assessing you against a set of criteria, which is the Schedule 8 uh, tolerances out of the mods, either the private or the professional standards. So if you keep trying to float, 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 and a bit of power and cushion the landing just beautifully, I, look, I agree, yeah, that was absolutely smooth as and beautiful. Problem is a touchdown point was 300 metres behind us. Right, I've had several where we've been five, six, seven hundred metres past the point of where we should have touched down. It should have been a go around. Right, that's as much as unstable approach as anything else. It's not about getting the aeroplane down uh, and uh, landing in a perfect touchdown, nice and smooth butter. Yes, it feels great, but we need to be landing where we intended to. So we've got our aiming point and then we've got our nominated touchdown point and that's where we should be putting the aeroplane down and landing. And... Just a nice little firm touchdown is absolutely fine. That's a normal landing. All right, just watch some of the airliners. Ah, I saw some of bounce today too. It was quite funny. All right, sometimes we don't have good ones. It all happens. But we, we need to stick to our stabilised approach criteria, putting it down where we meant to and working on our judgement. If we're having to float and do all this other stuff to try and get it nice and soft and gentle on the ground, well, then yeah, we've done something wrong. All right, so go around bring it back around the circuit and have another go. We're not trying to do the best landing every time. We're trying to do a safe landing every time. All right. Uh, what else have we got here? Look, this one's the big one, all right? This one is dear to my heart. I'm very passionate about it. And my biggest pet hate of all, especially in this industry, is a bully. I cannot stand pilots being abused, treated poorly, working for free, not being paid correctly, being asked to work after hours. Um, it's all forms of bullying, okay? No matter how you how you slice it, it's it's just unnecessary. It's 2024 and everyone does better. We want to be proud of our industry. We want to create an industry that people want to be in and people want to be a part of it. And, you know, I, I just hate seeing people getting abused or mistreated. So we need to be supporting each other. We need to be feeling empowered and strong enough to be able to speak up or fight back. But ultimately, we've got to just stop taking it. And, and even if it's an entry-level job, that doesn't mean it's crap pay all right, might be the award, fine, that's the award. That's not to do with the employer, that's where it's at. If you accept the job, then accept the pay, get on with it and move on when it's time. And if I, if you know, if you ask me, the employee's got no recourse or any reason to come back at you for leaving if they haven't created a welcoming, fun place to work. You know, if, if they think that they can't afford to pay you, well, then their business structure's wrong. They're going after the wrong clientele. All right. There's plenty of companies out there that are making good money, paying their pilots well, looking after everyone. Everyone's happy. And guess what? You look after your pilots, they'll stay around a lot longer if there's opportunities for them. Even uh, companies that haven't got twins and other things, but there are people working there for long periods of time because it's a great environment. So please support each other, work together. Don't... Uh, allow this crap to go on, support your mates, speak out, and uh, this includes ridiculous bonds and, and and expectations as well, all right? So legal bonding is fine. I'm talking about the bogus stuff that's all made up and it's basically illegal. It's against the award and everything else. So take the action that you need to and get deal with it. If you are being bullied, if you are being harassed, if you're being mistreated, again, seek help. Don't keep accepting it. You do have the choice to leave. I know that's easy said than done. I know that's a big call, but there is help available and there are better jobs out there and employers that will respect you and look after you. 
And remember, this goes both ways too. So the employers that are doing the right thing, look after them. Do the right thing by them. And we've got to stop this vicious cycle of who can screw over who first, right? But when done right, look after yourself, look after each other. There's help out there. There's uh, the various unions as well if things get a bit tight. There's uh, Ang, uh, Angela doing a fantastic job at navigating Australia aviation. Get that wrong every time. Sorry, Ange. But navigating aviation, give her a call. All right, I'll put the link in the episode description. Um, there's a lot of outlets and uh, avenues there for you as well. All right, but never let it get so bad that, uh, you know, you do something silly. All right. That was a bit of a serious one to finish on, wasn't it? But it is my pet hates for 2024 and it is just something that I just cannot stand and I'm going to continue to uh, talk about it and support everybody and raise raise the awareness because it's, it's really important. All right, guys, that is it for this week. Um, I've got another bit of a heavy one. I will not have the episode out on Monday next week. I can tell you that this uh, right now. I'm flying the Mallard for the first time in about three months, uh, just over three months, and then the very next day I've got my OPC. So I'm going to be head down bum up for a little bit, but I will uh, talk to you all again probably about a similar time next week. Have a fantastic Easter with your family, friends. Look after each other if you're up here in Darwin having an orphan Easter like we have orphan Christmas. Um, I'm sure you'll uh, be getting together and having a bit of fun to stay safe on the roads. Personally, I don't know why you want to go out there with everybody else just to... Uh, <laughs> follow everyone on the road seems like an irony thing I'm much happier to stay home and uh, chill out but yeah take it easy and I will see you in the next episode alright guys until then blue skies and remember the golden rule aviate navigate communicate see ya see ya